G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be doing part four of my series of what it's like to run a fish room. If you haven't seen the other parts of this series, you can watch the playlist right here. However, if you are good to go, let's get straight into it with this week's video. So what we've got here are two different brine shrimp hatcheries. This one is more along the lines of the traditional method of hatching brine shrimp in a soda bottle that you cut the top off and you turn it upside down. And because of this, cone-like shape at the bottom of the bottle. The baby brine shrimp or the eggs stay suspended in the salt water solution for much longer because they don't really have any corners to get trapped in. With this sort of method is that you need to generally put an airline hose here on the lid um, and hot glue it to the, the lid so you don't get any leaks. You can have a tap and then you can siphon out the baby brine shrimp into another container to feed to your fish. I haven't done that. I'm quite lazy when it comes to sick things like this. So I go the lazy method and I've just used a, a container. This is one of my large measuring cups and I just sit the bottle in that. I've had this uh, culture going for several months now, probably about four or five months actually. And I've actually got quite large brine shrimp in here now. And they are constantly spawning in this bottle and having more baby brine shrimp. Now, I wanted an easier way to hatch my baby brine shrimp rather than putting them in here. It's kind of hard to get a siphon in through the top here and because I haven't put a siphon at the bottom, it's obviously a little bit of more of a challenge to get the baby brine shrimp out of this container. So what I did was, thought, let's just bypass the whole uh, Coke bottle method, just put them straight into my measuring cup. I'm not a brine shrimp hatcher aficionado, uh, I don't proclaim to be. I don't notice any difference in uh, yeah, success of your hatch rates. I was feeding out of this container for just over two days to my Alto Lamprologus calvus, my Lamprologus ocellatus gold, and my Lamp Neo Lamprologus brevis fry. So three lots of fry actually as well, uh, my Judochromus regani, they, they had some fry as well. And feeding all those fish, uh, all those fry for two to three days from one of these containers, um, I'm using a little sachet of brine shrimp eggs in here. I don't put the whole sachet in. This container is quite small for the entire sachet. Maybe a quarter of it, it goes in there. So I don't find any difference with this method to this method in terms of success rate. Uh, in terms of ease of getting the baby brine shrimp out of this container versus this container, far more easier to get the baby brine shrimp out of this container. You probably wouldn't think that is the case, but it is uh, because of the wide mouth um, and the lower water level, it's easier to get your hand in here and target getting uh, and target extracting the baby brine shrimp out of this container than this container. If I had an airline hose here, I would have to target my torch, my light, to around the neck of the bottle to ensure that the baby brine shrimp were accumulating at the bottom here, open a tap and the baby brine shrimp would come out. I would then have to pour that brine solution into another container such as this. However, my easiest solution, and this is what works for me, obviously there's a lot of different ways, a lot of different methods to hatch baby brine shrimp, but the easiest solution I've found for me at the moment is to just use a syringe. I don't need to start a siphon. With a siphon as well, you're gonna be getting a lot more of the eggshells, the hatched uh, empty egg sh brine shrimp eggshells. Um, you don't really want that. However, with a syringe, you can really target where you're extracting the brine shrimp from, uh, and I find it just heaps easier. Righto guys, it's been 24 hours since I started this culture. I'm gonna turn the torch on, and reduce some of that exposure so you can see in there. Now I've got my wide angle lens on, and hopefully you can see on camera all the baby brine shrimp swimming around here at the moment. Now that I've turned the torch on, I'm hoping they're gonna to start to swim and congregate to around this part of the container, and I'll be able to suck them out with my syringe. So what I'm going to do is swap, actually yeah you can see them, okay so you can see the brine shrimp migrating across to the light source. I pulled out the aeration about five minutes ago and you can still see the eggs settling out, some uh, floating, some uh, sinking to the bottom of the container but as you can see the majority of the brine shrimp are migrating towards the light source. So I'm just going to swap lenses over now and put my macro lens on and you should see, you should be able to see them a little bit better. Okay guys, so hopefully you can see on camera 
there's a bit of a gradient of orange to, with brighter orange towards the light. Uh, and that is the baby brine shrimp making their migration towards the light source. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna suck some out with my syringe and feed my baby cichlids. You'll see on camera the end of my syringe in the water. And I'm just gonna start sucking them out. Let's have a look at what I've collected on the syringe. So again, this having a syringe saves you time from having to siphon them out of the measuring cup into another container and then putting them into the tank. Having a syringe, I'm able to just inject this straight into the tank, target feeding the fry, delivering the food straight to where the fry are so they don't have to swim too far to get their food. Another benefit of having the syringe. So I'm gonna feed my fry now. Syringe is up here, ready to release these baby brine shrimp into the aquarium. And there we go. As you can see, it's a fairly easy process. I'm doing it one-handed while holding my DSLR up to record this for you guys. So not rocket science, very easy to do. Just drawing up more water into the syringe and feeding my calvus fry. You see them going for the baby rind shrimp. Really simple process. So what I'm gonna do now, I like to turn the flow off on the aquarium, just so they don't have to swim as hard against the current to get the baby brine shrimp. So once these guys eat this lot of baby brine shrimp, I'll get another syringe full and add it to the tank. And I'll do that two or three times. And then later on, a few hours later, I'll feed them some live microworms with some crushed pellets that have been soaked in aquarium water. And this varied diet is fantastic because you're ensuring that they're getting a wide range of vitamins and minerals. This tank did have live Daphnia in it, as did the tank to the right of it. However, this tank now has salt water in it. What I intend to do with this tank is breed brine shrimp as well as grow brine shrimp to adulthood to feed to my Tanganyikan cichlids. So hopefully this little experiment works. So I'm gonna pop in the live brine shrimp that I have been growing for a few months in this cola bottle. They're not gonna know what hit them. So you can see a lot of movement in this bottle, all the adults. I'm just going to pour it in here. That's all there is, that's all there is to it, really. Try and get them all out. There are a lot of eggs in here, and there would be hatched brine shrimp eggs. That's, that's, that's really all there is to it. The salinity level is different to what was in the bottle. Hopefully it doesn't shock the brine shrimp too much but they're very tolerant of a wide range of salinity levels, of salt levels in water. So I'm pretty sure this is gonna be fine for them. So they've got some aeration there, they've got some light, a lot more room to swim in. Hopefully I'll have a lot more brine shrimp uh, surviving to adulthood that I can feed to my cichlids. That's the plan, but we'll see how that goes. Also, hopefully they continue to spawn in this tank. They were spawning in this bottle, that's for sure. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna feed the tank some spirulina and uh, just cloudy up the water just a little bit for them and that's enough of an indicator for me to know that that is enough spirulina for them and I'll wait till that water clears again before I feed them more spirulina. You wanna keep them enriched with spirulina so they pass that nutrients onto your cichlids. So I got my jar of spirulina, just gonna stir it around and Drop a couple teaspoons in here, not too much. Hopefully that's enough. And we'll see how they go. Hopefully this little experiment works. So it's two days later, and as you can see, the adult brine shrimp seem to be doing quite well in this tank now. The only thing I'm not sure about with this tank is the sponge filter. It seems to be doing too good a job in this tank and there are quite a few brine shrimp eggs in the sponge filter. 
I might turn the airflow down, but I'm more leaning towards removing it entirely. The other reason is because brine shrimp are filter feeders and it is kind of counterintuitive to have a filter in a tank where you have organisms that are filter feeders. Basically the sponge filter is competing with the brine shrimp for that spirulina and removing it from the water column faster than they can eat it. So that's another reason to remove the sponge filter from the aquarium. I have seen other people put sponge filters in their brine shrimp tanks, but I think that's kind of counterintuitive. The other reason is they've been in that Coke bottle for months on end without a filter and they've been doing fine. So I think they'll be quite all right without a sponge filter in their tank. I'll just have aeration in there with no air stone on that airline hose. So that should be fine for these guys, I think. But there you go, they look quite well in here. And hopefully, um, once I take that sponge filter out, there should be more eggs in the water column and more baby brine shrimp in this tank, as well as more brine shrimp growing up to adulthood, which is really what I want in this tank because I want to feed the adult brine shrimp to my cichlids. So there you have it guys, part four of what it's like to run a fish room. Really hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, comment and subscribe buttons. I really appreciate it. All right, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.